Welcome back, everybody. Today, we're going to be taking a look at version two pack for my SD3 uh, workflow collection. The first one came with text to image, image to image, and 4K upscaling using Hyper Superior with SDXL. All right. And that had instructions on how to get it all set up, how to install, and that was SD3 Medium because that's when that came out. Also, instructions how to get it all set up, how to use the collection. That collection is going to be in the new pack. So the new pack version contains four workflows. Two of them are automatic, so they're going to be using Blip to take the image, which you're putting into ControlNet, and or the image-to-image -image version. So essentially auto-prompt using Blip. It's very simple. There's two versions of the two new workflows, one with auto, one without. One is text to image, the other is image to image. It's really that simple. So let's take a look. So this would be the uh, image to image SD3 control net workflow, workflow. I've included the old SDXL Supia workflow at the bottom in this one, but you don't need it because we've got the tile control net, which uses ultimate SD upscale. So if you've ever done SD upscale before with tile adapter, it's the same thing. All right. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at the workflow. So first we load the image, which is for control net. There's a resizer to keep it under control. Uh, plug that into the uh, latent image. Hang on a minute. Yep. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the empty latent image is going to go into the main K sampler right here. What I've done is I've put a group for your control net canny and a group for your control net pose so they can be toggled along with the control net tile section so if you come and look at the controls over here we have our prompt our negative prompt and then laura stack is off because you probably don't have one uh cnet the tile upscale is currently off. Superior currently off. Pose toggle is currently off. We've got canny on. This is my input image. Generated castle on a mountain. This is my prompt. A large castle sits on top of a grassy mountain. The sky is dominated by deep blues and fluffy white clouds, creating a mysterious atmosphere that hangs above the distant forest. Magical energy with detailed patterns projects across the land. Diffuse, light, cinematic, photorealistic. Now, as usual, you can get lots of different effects depending on the sampler that you decide to use. So, for example, here I think I used Eula without the control net. Here I started bringing the control net in, but it was too strong and the sampler settings were incorrect. Here the sampler settings were definitely incorrect. And then I essentially keep going until I get to something like this. And I just kept tweaking it and tweaking it. I kind of like to look at this, but when you zoom in on it, it's not good. And then I started to get these from under generation. So then I decided to sort of just tweak it, tweak it, tweak it. And we get to here. Now, it's not amazing, but you've got to think that there's no image to image. So it's, it's using the canny. Control net. Let's see if I can line this up like there. So you can see how it is following the shape of the control net, which is what I'm testing. Whether you can get a good image out of it. Because I think that what we're really waiting for is SD3 full, which of course all of this stuff will, will work with as far as we know. Um, it'll just be a case of putting the, the bigger model in here, I guess. Um, but essentially, if I wanted to do poses as well, then I would just toggle that and then I would take a person. Let's see if we can find, well, there's a person. Let's do Spider-Man. So I'm going to hack fraud it. So I'm going to say uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man stands on top of a train. And then I'm not even going to bother changing anything else. Because it's crazy. None of that is even in the shot. So let's say train point three. And off we go. So it's going to make the control net canny there. 
There we go. It's full screen this. There we go. We've got a control net. We've got the open pose that's been sent in. And what do we get? We get that. That's fun. So now let's have a little mess around, shall we? Would it benefit from more steps? We've covered this in the past, but, you know, it's worth a refresher. More steps, good. I don't know, it's debatable. you got to think, like, it's not using the image at all. This is using the model and the canny. That's all. And I haven't given it a very good prompt either. But um, if we were to go to uh, Eula Normal, and we're at 2.5 CFG, so it's very low right now. Normally, people would go with sort of like a 7 and a, th and a 20, but this is SD3, so it's sort of like a special boy. Okay, so that went well. Basically, what I had to do, I had to put keep proportion back on, and because I'm running both control nets, I had to change it from 0 to 1 and 0 to 1 to 0 and... Oh, look at that. I messed up, actually. 0.05 interesting and uh, let's see if we can break it again so i wanted 0 0.5 actually so that really was a, only doing canny for like the very first few steps and then stopping uh so let's see if we can break it now because this was actually quite a good generation yep broke it again so what it what i did was i have the open pose going okay so how about we try going zero here and end the open pose at 0.5 basically i'm overlapping them um and then if we say 0 0.1 so can he for like the first and uh, let's see see it's kind of fighting if i put this at one sorry 0 0.1 so it's, it's doing a handoff, a bit like the negative. So, and it's going to stop as well. And that is actually better. So it's almost like we use the open pose, not for the whole generation, but just to set it up. So what if I said 0 0.2? So we have it for 10% and 10%. Because it still works. It's still controlling the gen. Yeah, there we go. Much better. So basically, the control net is like super strong. Um, I know that turning it down at the strength doesn't actually have the same effect. Um, if you turn the strength down on these, it just doesn't adhere to what you're giving it as much. Um, it, it just makes it, it looser. It doesn't actually control the strength, more like allows more variance, which is the same thing, but... Let's see if we can show you what I mean here. So if I say uh, 0 0.5 on the pose and 0 0.5 on the canny and then go. There we go. So we're still going to get like, we're going to get a good picture and it's kind of close to the pose. You see what I mean? It's It's sort of like it was, it started as the pose and then, right? But it's it's very it's varied from it quite a bit. Whereas if I said one and one, it will adhere to what I'm giving it more strictly. But the trick that I found that sort of makes it work a little bit better, as you can see, is by doing this. So basically only allowing the control net to apply for like 10% of the generation and then don't let them overlap. So for the first 10%, I've done the uh, canny, and then for the second 10%, I've done the pose. So obviously, if I wanted to turn off the canny right now, and just give it the pose, it gives the model more freedom to do something crazy. Okay, cool. Uh, and then obviously, just to demo the what, what what's going on with this, uh, the soup is still there on some of these workflows, so let's just show you the tile. So let's say I'm happy with this, whatever this is. In fact, no, listen, I'm not happy with that. I'm going to turn the, uh, there you go, turn that back on. Because it does make a pretty good image there. It's going to make Spider-Man. 
and then it's going to run the tiled upscale. Now, this is just ultimate SD upscale. No tricks. I've plugged Remacry in. We're using the same seed as the previous. Uh, we've got image color match running. Um, and there he is. Okay, so you can see that the tile, if I zoom out, you can't see the seams. I found if you did a second stage like we used to, you can see the seams. And I got annoyed with trying to make the seams go away. And I thought, well, to be honest, this is twice the size. This is a 2x upscale. So this is 2048 or something like that. Um, we've still got the 4K upscaler down here with Supia, but uh, really this video is all about the tile. So control net tile. I haven't seen many people actually give you an implementation of tiled upscaling with SD3. So I thought I'd include it with my workflow. Um, essentially it is, we have canny and we have pose. So what more can we do with this? Well, there's a couple of things. The main one would be image to image. So if I just throw the image to image version of this in now. So we've got the tiled ultimate on, we've got canny on, we've got pose on, we've got a prompt which says the house sits on top of a rocky island. Uh, we've got that there. Cool, cool, cool. We're going to do the uh, thing which I just t was talking about. So we're gonna, just going to just change this to naught. To 0 0.1, and then we're going to change this one to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Even though we're not going to be using pose because it's a scenery shot, right? House doesn't have any people in it. Um, and then uh, I think I've removed Supia from this workflow because this one seemed to work a little bit better. Uh, you're not going to need the reactor, you're not going to need the restore face, but hey. So let's give this one a blast. So there's our canny. And there's our first output. So if we just remind ourselves of what the source image looked like, source image looked like this. So you can see there's quite a lot of artifacts. It's not a good image. It's a bit looking a bit compressed, right? So if we take that image, put it through. And then we get something like that. It's much nicer. Yeah. Much nicer. Um, so, yeah. There it is. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, really. Here comes the tiled output. So, if we look at the tiled output, um, I would say sometimes we're getting some weird blurry artifacts and things that used to be sharp. Um, but generally speaking, when you're looking at it as the full image, it's really nice and crisp. But I would say that certain textures sometimes look bad when when you zoom in. This isn't this isn't that bad actually. This is really quite a good gen. Um, it's probably a lot due to the prompt and what you're feeding it. Now, of course, the main difference with this workflow and the last one was that we're actually doing image to image now, so we're not sending a blank empty latent. We're converting this image into the latent that we start with so we're using this we're using image to image with canny of the same image um and then we're using 28 4.5 dpm pp 2m sgm uniform at 0.75 now uh i you know if you're being astute you'll note that the last one had slightly different settings it's completely up to you what sampler and scheduler and all of that you should really tweak them about because if it looks like this you probably just need to tweak it about because it could look like this now you might say oh the background's bad i don't like this background cool cool that's all about my prompt that's other stuff that was in my prompt that i could, probably could have taken out and i didn't prompt the train <laughs> so it had to make something <laughs> but it's my fault if I had gone and edited my canny map, for example, and loaded it in without a preprocessor, I could manually edit all this out and just have this guy, right? It's completely up to you how much work you put into this. You don't have to use preprocessors. You could pre-make your own uh, canny maps, 
you can pre-make your own and then you can put them into image we're also going to cover a bit of fun with uh poses soon so ways to get your poses anyway i released a few packs but it's worth showing how you can now do it all in 3d which is very cool okay so that would be the tiling so this is a short video because the last video explained how to install it and um this video is really just an update because the contents of the new pack you got the old pack then you got the new pack so the last thing i have to show you is the uh image to image auto oh yeah of course that's in a that's in a compressed folder so if i just drag the one i wanted to show you in here there it is so if we take a look at this what i've got uh is the output from the captions in fact you know what i decided to run it no 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 that's fine okay cool so what it's going to do is it's going to look at the image and then it's going to use blip caption to generate the prompt right so it's not using this text box it's hooked up here so this is what's actually going to get used i think so it's a bit hacky right i'll admit it's a bit hacky um but if i just change and go and then change to something other than rock houses gotta have something other than rock houses <laughs> i could do a street with some graffiti why not that'll be a challenge okay so it's chugging away there you go so it's made the one from the house on the cliff and look at all the detail in the rocks sometimes i think it goes a bit too far also got a flying boat yeah that's right it's going to do the upscale as well oi no ads all right so if i go and have a look look at that it looks like they're fishing from the sky oh yeah this is interesting because they're trying to get these details they're a bit ropey i can't wait to get the full sd3 model because there's a lot of potential it just seems to be lacking some sharpness layers or something it's very strange um so there's the output from there you got control it yeah control it's on but it's just decided i'm just going to do whatever i want ah yeah here we go you haven't done the thing one whoops so zero and 0.1 and zero uh no one no 0 0.1 and 0 0.2 there we go. So now we've got that set up one. Right. That should be better now. Let's try it. Or it'll just do the same thing. Oh, yeah, that is better. Okay, right. So we had graffiti in that area of the screen. Yeah. And now we've got graffiti in that area of the screen. Grant, I'll grant you, it's not an exact match. Um, but it is what it is. Like I said, you've got to tweak those values if you want to get it exactly as you want it. But what I wanted to do was use this to automatic a prompt and then using that image as a guide for itself, create new variations of what that image was. And that's exactly what it's doing. And it actually isn't too bad. If I zoom in, you can clearly tell it's not, you know, it's not, it's nothing like what you would get with Excel in there detailers but um it's not bad it's not bad this is why i think that the full model the the sd3 full whenever that comes i think it'll probably solve a lot of this um because it does look like it's just not quite i don't know how to say it it does look like a lot of the time it's just not quite ready or it's just missing something i don't know but regardless, I did say I would bring out the workflow when it was available. I don't, I haven't seen many examples of the tiling. Okay. How to use the tiling control net. So I'm sure other people will put that to good use. And that's pretty much it. So thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.